Howdy, and welcome to the almost world famous Cactus Atlas. On today's episode, we've traveled to Southeast Arizona to start celebrating fall. We're at Apple Annie's Produce to do a corn maze and pick our Halloween pumpkins. So we thought we'd bring you along in case you wanted to check this out. So if you want to find out what it's like, stick around and let's go do this together. So who would have thunk that here in Arizona, we actually have farms, pumpkin patches, and cornfields. Bet you didn't know that, did you? Well, so Amy's within earshot, so she can kind of fact check me here. But we're at Apple Annie's Produce. So there are several locations of Apple Annie's very close to each other. We had just stopped before here to get lunch at one of their orchards where you could do apple picking. They do some grilling over there. Um, this one's more about pumpkins right now, but they also do vegetables at other times of the year, but it is autumn now here in Arizona. So they have a corn maze, which we are gonna be doing, as well as a pumpkin patch. That's pretty cool. So as soon as we were here, we were greeted with some free samples of like a caramel kettle corn. Fresh, delicious. Look, different flavors of popcorn there. We are looking for the maze and there is some signage here that will tell you which way to go. Later, you got pumpkins over this way as well as pumpkins over there, but we wanna do the corn maze first. So this is kind of a tradition really for Amy and I. We've come down here, I wouldn't say every single year, but many years we do come down here. It's about a three and a half hour drive from Phoenix, Arizona. It's located in really kind of very far Southeast Arizona, not too far from Tombstone, if you're familiar with that. The main town here is Wilcox. And I would recommend, and I'm gonna take my own advice, maybe use the potty before you head into the corn maze, because if it's like before, they have different difficulty levels and you can be in there for a while so now as with many things in life there are rules for the corn maze that you should abide by including no pets no smoking and no throwing corn no alcohol no running and no cutting corners so some helpful info just to let you know we're doing the challenge maze and it says it can take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes sometimes as long as two hours so Let's see how smart we are today. And the way this works is you can choose a subject and you'll have different questions. And as you go through the maze, you'll encounter numbered areas where it'll give you a question. And depending on the answer, you don't really know what the answer is. It'll tell you which way to turn. Amy chose Halloween, I think was her subject, but you can see there's quite a few different subjects in there. All right, so. Just starting out here on the challenge maze. I'm gonna do something really quick. And you can see I started a stopwatch. So we're gonna keep track of how long it takes us. We gotta go. Let's go. All right, we are in the earliest section here of the challenge maze. And we've done this before. Um, I don't think I've ever timed us before though. And it does seem to take a while. It is a big maze. And as Amy just uh, astutely pointed out, every year they do a different design of the corn maze. So if you mastered it last year, that knowledge is not gonna help you out this year. Do you hear the corn in the wind? It's kind of loud, actually. Let me ask you this question, come over here. Is that a valid trail? I'm gonna say no. No. It just seems too tight, so. That is not a valid trail. The okay. corn cops will come after you. Okay, we don't want corn cops. <laughs> Mola Ram Shakti Corn. <laughs> oh gosh. I should say that. <laughs> <laughs> you can see too, the corn is thick. Yeah, you kind of have to watch your eyes. Yeah, one thing I'm wondering is, there's actual corn on here. Right? I mean, are they gonna use this or? No. It looks like it's gross. So yeah, if anybody knows whether they harvest this stuff after the season, the, the corn maze is done, let me know. I, it just seems weird that they do this just for a corn maze, but maybe that's all it is. I don't know. I kind of feel like we're going in a circle at this point. Do you think we're going in a circle too, Amy? I think so. 
Um, but I feel like that goes back, but we're gonna go, we'll go this way. Watch, we're gonna come out the entrance. <laughs> so here are what you wanna find in here. These are your saving graces. Really your decision is go left or right at this point. If we answer these, the question correctly, it'll tell you which way to go. Um, but we have to answer the question correctly or else it may send us on the wrong path. So just to explain once again, we are gonna read question number one. So in the spirit of Halloween, this is a Halloween themed one. I'm gonna ask the question, before pumpkins, what was commonly carved to make jack-o'-lanterns? A, onions, B, melons, or C, turnips? Turnips. I agree, I have heard that before. I'm 100% so certain. That's saying turn left. All right, let's turn left. Okay, so we turn left. And they're already kind of confusing us. You could either go this way or that way. And just doing a quick time check, we are at about 14 minutes in. We only found the first clue out of how many of you know? Uh, 10. 10. So if it averages 15 minutes to find each clue, we got a long way to go. Oh, I think we found our second clue. All right. All right, so seems like we're doing well so far. Two clues down. By the way, I totally meant to say this earlier. The cost of the maze, there is a cost, so it's not free. $8 per person, so for the two of us it costs $16, but we'll of course put information down in the description below um, in case there were child's prices or senior prices or anything like that. So do check that description in case you head down this way so you know. All right, we're starting to get lost. So that's the fun of the corn maze. So one thing you may want to do if you do this maze is to bring something to drink, water, Gatorade, something like that. It is October here in Southern Arizona, but it is quite warm uh, in the mid eighties. And we're trying to navigate. I'm just kind of following Amy blindly here. I trust her. <laughs> Bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> It's such a welcome sight when you see one of these guys here. You know, I didn't see any rules on their rules board about bringing breadcrumbs. I estimate we're about halfway done and we are almost exactly 40 minutes into this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amy's face is like, what? <laughs> it's true. Wow. We've been spending 40 minutes. It's amazing. It's going by so fast, but we're only halfway done. Oh my goodness. I guess our estimate of taking about an hour and a half is right. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So this here, what they said is not a path, even though it's very path-like to me. So we skipped ahead a little bit. Okay, we're, we're gonna keep it honest. That wasn't meant to be a path and it took us straight to the next number. So we're gonna try to do this honestly because we don't want you, our fans, to think that we cut corners. All right, so we're up here. You get a kind of a good view of the corn maze. You can't cheat though, I thought you'd be able to see where you're supposed to go, and you can't. And now we can answer question eight honestly. So we have now answered eight questions, there are two left. So we're making really good time on the second half, I'd say. Feels like the numbers were closer together. Wow, and as soon as I was talking about having eight questions down, we come across question number nine. Wow, this trail goes on for a long time, so hopefully I chose wisely. <laughs> Oh, I think I found it, Amy. I think I found it. Ooh, I see a number. I do too. See the red and white tent? I think that's our destination. We made it. And I'm gonna stop the stopwatch. The time I have is 57 minutes and 29 seconds. So an hour, it took us 60 minutes almost. So we survived the corn maze and the hard challenge maze. And we didn't even really cheat, I would say. Actually, I would say we did not cheat. Uh, the only thing we did is we had we had the extra, well, yeah, not intentionally, but we did correct ourselves. Um, we did have a second set of questions so we could like kind of cross verify when we were unsure about one of the questions and that seemed to help. But overall, I would say it didn't feel as challenging as the last time we were here. Do you think it was or? Uh, that's not the same. Yeah, but then again, it did take an hour. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so next up, it's time to go find our pumpkins. Probably the most important decision we make all year. So first things first, we need a little wheelbarrow 
to tote our pumpkins and I think they have little clipper things too. Now if you want to take a hayride to the pumpkin patch rather than walk, it's $4 for ages three and older. But you could also buy a combo, uh, $10 for adults to get the corn maze and hayride. And of course you could see the children's prices there too. Ages two and under are free. All right, so we got our pumpkin clippers and our wheelbarrow. I chose this one because it's orange, just like a pumpkin. So <laughs> now we have to go find the pumpkin patch, which I think is over that way somewhere. So this isn't all a pumpkin patch. You got some zucchini over here. Looks like you got some other things over here too. I see pickling cucumbers, cucumbers, yellow squash, all sorts of vegetables. You've got tomatoes here, eggplant. You got jalapenos too. Oh yeah, you got hot green chili. You got mild green chilies. There are so many vegetables. There's a kind gentleman that kind of explained that prime pumpkin picking seems to be maybe about midway down this field, he said. So we're gonna go down a little bit further and see if we can find those perfect pumpkins here. But look how far and expansive that pumpkin patch goes. It's way down there. All right, we're parking our wheelbarrow. I'm gonna bring the clippers though. Got the handy clippers ready to go. Let's do this. All right. Pumpkins! How many of you guys out there have been to a pumpkin patch and picked your own pumpkin and cut them off the vine? If you've never done it before, you really need to try it sometime. It really makes choosing the right pumpkin special. Why do you wanna to go to a grocery store and just pick one out of the leftovers? Come out here and choose the perfect pumpkin. Like this one maybe. This one has promise, I think. It's already been cut though. I'm trying to find the perfect one. I found the most perfect pumpkin garden. It's my secret. Look at them. They're so round and perfect and wonderful. And I want to take them all home with me. Man, I think we struck gold here. Virtually every pumpkin in this area that Amy found, they're all like really nice. I haven't seen one that I really don't like so far. So Amy has a knack for finding the best place in the pumpkin patch, I think. It calls to me. It calls to her, she says. She loves Halloween. I am friends of the pumpkin. So, there. Okay, so we think we like this one here. So, let's grab her, get her out of here, and we'll go take a look at our score. All right. They look like good, healthy pumpkins. They do. Score! Now a pumpkin tip for you. I think this is something we read on the internet earlier because we were curious. We came out here, it is early, like the first week of October. So there are no crowds. We've been out here a little bit later in the season and you'll, you'll get a lot of crowds and the pickings get more slim the longer you wait. So what's that noise? <laughs> I think it's a grasshopper or something. Um, but how long will a pumpkin last? I think is the question. Amy, what did you find out? Pumpkins, as long as they're not damaged on the outside, have any kind of scarring, and they're kept in a cool place, like in an air-conditioned house or something, should last like eight weeks, eight to 12 weeks, I think is what we read. Eight to 10. Eight to 10 weeks. So there's no reason why not to buy that. That's a, virtually two months, basically, they should last. These only have to last a little less than a month at this point. So why not get out here early, have your choice of the good ones, and, keep them in your house on display until you're ready to carve them. That's what we're gonna do. So I think we've chosen our two candidates here. We're gonna go buy them, I think. I would say they're probably medium-sized pumpkins. We'll find out how much they charge for them. But uh, yeah, all we have to do is put them in the wheelbarrow and then wheel them back over there. So the final price for these two uh, was $8 a piece is what they ended up charging us. So $16 total plus Amy got this other little white pumpkin for an additional three dollars. And I'm going to give you a few final thoughts about our day here at Apple Annie's in Wilcox, Arizona. It's always a pleasure for Amy and I to come down here every year. It's almost a tradition, um, but some years I think we missed it. Uh, the cool things here that we love doing, corn maze, always a blast. And then of course the highlight for us is picking our pumpkins cutting them right off the vine out here in this beautiful farmland in southeast Arizona. We love it down here. 
So, if you live in Phoenix, or even if you live in Tucson or something, you want a really nice, fun, family-friendly family, family friendly experience doing an autumn activity, highly recommend checking out Apple Annie's. It's never disappointed us yet. If you're new here, please subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Also, hit that notification bell to stay informed anytime we release a new video, which we do all of the time. Also, you can find us on social media at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under the name Cactus Atlas. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you again in the very near future on our next adventure. So until then, take it easy. Oh my god. <laughs> that's a workout right there. That's going to work out your abs trying to get out of that. Woo! <laughs>